Okay, let's get into it now. What we're going to do is we're going to change the layer name here, not Momdel. Let's do model. And I am going to duplicate the model layer. I'm going to change this one to where this bottom layer. I'm just going to call this model blur. And for this one, I'm just going to take off the word copy. All right, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the top layer. I'm going to press D, Control D to deselect or Command D if you're on a Mac. Click there. So the model blur. What we're going to do is I need to stretch out the color so that when I do the explosion effect, the color actually shows up in little pieces of explosion. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter and we're going to liquefy. I'm going to change the size of the liquefy brush. I'm going to make it pretty big. I'm going to go about 500 or so. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag just a little ways. I want to do this in smaller pieces so I don't, because if I just do one long one, it just creates that effect, which is not what I'm going for. I want to get some little bit of color variety. Now, you need to be patient with this one, as with the brushes that we're going to do shortly, uh, because I did notice that it really does kind of bog down a little bit. I want to show you some of these cool kinds of effects, but photo P and my internet connection do not like each other. So let's go ahead and keep stretching this thing out a little bit. Man, his hair is looking amazing. And his ear, it's like Lord of the Rings. Oh gosh, no, whoops. Let me, let me undo, I went a little crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a second to make up for my grunts and uh, getting a little out of control. Let's go ahead and click okay. All right, excellent. That's exactly what I was looking for. But I want to hide this effect. So let me show you a trick. You're going to go in here and click on mask. Press D on your keyboard. That'll switch your colors to uh, the default colors. And then here's a keyboard shortcut. If you press the Alt or Option key on a Mac and you press the Backspace key on your keyboard, it fills with white. If you press the control key or the command key on a Mac and backspace, it fills with black. So, and if you ever forget, just try the opposite one. And it also depends on which order this is in. So that will throw it a little bit. It has to be black and white uh, to be able to do that. So we're filling that with black. So we've hidden the entire layer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top layer, I'm gonna make that layer active, and I'm gonna add a mask. What I want to do now is I want to get rid of the sharpness and the straightness of these lines that are here. So I want to break that up with a brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to the brushes. I am going to choose. Let's go ahead and use the 1536 brush. And I am going to reduce the size of this brush. Let's try 200. I click in this little gray area so it accepts the 200. That's a little small. I'm going to use my brackets to increase it just a little bit. This is the part you have to be patient on. I think I'm talking more to myself than I am you uh, with the patience thing, but that's fine. So right here, what I need to do is I need to flip the colors. So black is on top, white is on bottom. And I'm going to tap once. I don't want to go too far in because it's going to create that straight line that I showed you on the brush. Uh, move it out a little ways and tap. So I don't want it to be one long drag of the brush. This is more of what's known as a stamp. So you're going to click and then just wait for a minute for it to start to eat away at this outside edge. So I'm clicking, even clicking a little further out. Down here, going to click. I'm going to increase my brush and tap the right bracket a couple times and I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait. Doop, doop, doop. All right. And now with this being further back, I don't want to drag it right over here because it's going to really cut out his face. I'm going to tap it a couple times back here. Now this becomes more of an art than a science. So this is not like a layer style setting where I can just tell you, hey, type in this exact number, do this exact thing. Yours is going to look a little bit different than mine, but let me explain again as I wait for the brush. I'm reducing the size of the brush, but it's definitely taking some time. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. 
with a smaller brush. I'm going to wait. Come on. There we go. I'm just going to tap a couple times to try to eat away at that sharp contrast line. I'm getting rid of wherever there's a really strong difference in the lines. I want it to be a little bit more broken up. So like up here on his hair, I'm just talking because I'm waiting for the brush to catch up. Up here on his hair, you can kind of see it looks like there's pieces that have been kind of broken away. But then down here on his back, that line's really straight. It's really solid. So I want to use this to kind of break that up a little bit. So you have to be patient. I'm just tapping a few times. And then I'm waiting and then I'm moving away a little bit. So I'm using other parts of the left edge of the brush to kind of eat into that side so it doesn't look like it's actually solid. I'm gonna tap a few more times. So I'm gonna do the same thing all the way down to try to break up that line. But now I'm pressing the zoom out and that just took a while. So this is gonna be part of this tutorial is definitely a taking a little while. Come on. I kind of cut a little too far into his back, but that's okay. I'm gonna make my brush bigger. I'm gonna tap a couple times right there. I'm gonna wait. I'm actually gonna go to my brush and I wanna change the angle slightly. So I'm gonna move my spacing out so that I can actually see what the brush is, but this is sitting and waiting. There we go, I can kind of see the brush. So I wanna rotate this down a little bit. Let me see if I can get you the exact number before you start using the sliders, because the sliders are definitely slow when it's trying to figure out what to do. That's a little too much, so let's try There we go. So go ahead and type in 70 and let's click, close that back up. So now I got a little bit more of an angle. I'm gonna tap to get rid of some of those. I'm gonna come back up here, tap a little bit. So I mentioned before, your results may vary a little bit and I'm okay with that. It's more about the concept. All right, so I tapped a couple more times. So I've kind of cut away uh, the edge a little bit and I've kind of got a little bit of splatter happening a little bit more towards his shirt. Okay, so now we're going to hide that layer. So now what I want to do is I want to have the explosion looking like this. These little specks are shooting behind him. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to switch my brush and I'm going to have to rotate it the opposite direction. So let's click on here. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to try to just type in 140 and let's see if that gives me the exact rotation that I want. Nope. Let's try 220. Success. Yay. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the straight lines that are there away. I mean, towards his body so that I can get the spray on the outside. All right, so now let's make magic happen. Come on, Photo P, go with me. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm, you can see the spray is heading in the opposite direction. So right here, if I paint black on this layer, ain't nothing happening because it's black. It's black paint on a black background. I don't want that. I'm going to switch to white and I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger. So I'm at about 400. And I'm going to tap. Oh, that's cool. But make the brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to wait. Come on, photo P. There we go. I got about 800. So I'm keeping the straight line. See that, that edge, that little white line there. I want, I'm keeping that away from having it show up over here. Cause if I click here, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. In fact, I'm actually going to reduce the opacity of the brush just to give it a little more realism. So I'm going to drop this opacity down to about 60. 
and now I'm going to tap, tap. Oh, yeah, that's looking kind of cool. I'm going to move down there. That's kind of cool. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. So I'm going to tap it, and I'm going to wait. Okay, so I've got about 1,100 for the brush. And I'm going to move this slightly to the outside. I'm looking over on the left at where those little speckles are that are in the brush. I'm going to tap. Oh, I don't like that. That's way too big. Look, it's got that kind of fake um, color. It's too much of the color. I'm not liking that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the rotation of the brush a little bit. This is the part that's hard because I'm super nitpicky. And I want it to look really cool, but in doing these demos with the Photo P fighting me and this brush thing in Photo P fighting me and going so slow. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Uh, what I want to do is I want to rotate this brush just a little bit. So let's bring this one. Come on. You can do it. Doop -a -doo, doop -a -doo. All right, let's change this. I want to bring this up a little bit. So I'm going to reduce this to like 175. Let's see if it rotates the direction I want it to go. It did not. So let's go the opposite way. Let's do like 260. Still not going. Why did that not save? I said 260 photo P. There we go. I wanted the angle down below so the spray goes up. The reason for that is I wanted, I'm imagining having some of the spray on his body flying up towards this direction instead. So I can click down below the photo and let's reduce the size of the brush. I'm going to go to about 700 and I'm going to bring this down here and see what happens. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's kind of cool too. But if I click there, that's not cool. Done. Okay. So experiment around with that. I'm okay if yours looks a bit different. Really the key thing is when you look at these masks, one on the, the main model that's not all stretched out, you're aiming to the left and you're trying to avoid having these straight edges that are right here up close to the body. On the one that has the creepy blur what we're looking at here is let me turn that one back on and then turn sorry click the shift key to hide that what i really want is i want the alt key so you can see it so with this one we're painting with white but we're having the spray going in the opposite direction and i tried changing the angle a few times to try to get that little bit of dispersion happening all right, last finishing touches here. Let me actually zoom in. I just noticed something. Okay, no, it's just a photo. It was just a video card thing. Okay, cool. So once we have this, now what we're going to do is we're going to finish this off by just going in with this adjustment layer. We're going to use a gradient map. This is a nice way to kind of blend some of the colors together and give it kind of a cinematic look. So I'm going to click on this drop down. I'm going to choose the purple to orange. That's not the effect I'm looking for. That's not the Spotify but watch what happens with using this map. So once I have this map set up, I can actually change the blending mode and I'm going to switch this blending mode to soft light. Check that out. That just went from kind of a dull gray to almost like a, uh, like watching like a movie. They use that color grading a lot, but I'm going to drop the opacity. I think it's too heavy. I'm going to drop the opacity down just a little bit, maybe like 60%. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right, so now you have made a dispersion effect and you've used a brush that wasn't one of those just plain basic uh, circles or soft edges. And we'll get more into that. Hopefully, when we start using the Photoshop simulator piece, you're going to actually be able to use the brush engines better. So we'll test that out because brushes, oh my gosh, there's so many things you can do with brushes. If you do a search for Photoshop brushes, Check out all of these free brushes people have made, and I'll even show you how to make your own brush. It can be everything from artistic things like ink strokes and watercolors and stuff, all the way to actual drawings. 
all the way like they've got grass you've got wings uh let's see clouds you could do smoke they've even got brushes where it's words or entire photos and you just click once and it shows up brushes are incredible you can do so much with them so the time that it takes to make this one totally worth it the time that it takes to mess with the brushes is totally worth it in the long run so uh save your file and go ahead and give me that psd